Number one. We need to talk about the outsourcing company we're using. What's the issue? Aren't they meeting the deadlines? They're always quite prompt, actually. But the quality of their work is wildly inconsistent. I presume you've sent them feedback, right? Numerous times. They always respond that they'll take it into account, but it's never reflected in future projects. I think they're completely incompetent. Well, unfortunately, we're locked into a contract with them. There would be a huge financial penalty if we were to back out of it. Question What does the man imply about the outsourcing company? Number two. There's an exhibit coming to the National Museum we might be interested in. Really? What is it? Old woodblock prints from China. That does sound right up my alley. Do we need to reserve tickets? Not for the exhibition itself. It'll be on for several months. There's an opening event next week with a lecture by a scholar of Chinese art that does require reservations. If it works with our schedule, that'd be fantastic. We'd get a lot more out of the exhibit if we heard the lecture. Question What will the speakers probably do? Number three. I didn't realize there was a local election next month. Yeah. One of the big issues is about funding for a new high school. There have been some very heated debates about it. I'm not surprised. Many people think taxes are astronomical already. But I guess the existing school is bursting at the seams. Well, I'd like to find out how substantial the tax increase would be. I'm not sure of the amount. Money spent on education is a wise investment for the future, though. Question. What does the man imply about the potential tax increase? Number four. Can you show me on the map where Bluff Trail is? Yes, but you're not planning to hike it today, are you? Yes, I am. Is there some reason I shouldn't? I'm afraid the boardwalk portion of the trail is closed. It's partially submerged because of flooding. Oh, I had no idea. Can you show me which trails are open for a moderately challenging hike? Preferably ones with views of the cypress swamp? Sure. Here, let me mark them on your map. Question Why did the woman change her plan? Number five. Hi, Professor Reynolds. You wanted to see me about graduation requirements? That's right, Ellen. Your records indicate you're short of business class. Really? I thought the accounting internship I did last summer would stand in lieu of those credits. Ah,、uh, yes. I remember you signing up for that. Did you hand in the paperwork after completing it? I didn't realize I had to. Is this going to delay my graduation? If you get the forms and fill them out today, I'm sure we can sort things out. I'll do that right away. Question What do we learn from the conversation? Number six. Did you get around to scheduling your health check, Sam? Actually, I've already had the checkup. Oh, how did it go? No serious issues, but as I suspected, I could stand to shed a few pounds. Well, at least you can do something about that. Easier said than done. I have no problem making plans to exercise. It's just following through with the plans that I have trouble with. You and me both. Bad habits are so much easier to develop than break. Question. What do we learn about the man?
Number seven. Honey, does Billy seem down to you lately? Not particularly. Why? Well, he's spending so much time in his room. He seems to be on his computer most of the time when he's home. I think that's called being a teenager. Besides, with all the activities he's involved in at school, I think he just needs time to unwind. You're probably right. I do worry about what he's doing online, though. The web can be a dangerous place. Are you suggesting I do some poking around? It might not be a bad idea every now and then. Question: What does the woman imply? Number eight. You sure came home late last night, honey. The sound of the door opening woke me up for a second. Sorry, I was stuck at the office until pretty late again. Afterward, I decided to grab a drink with friends to release some stress. I see. You look pretty tired this morning, though. Yeah, alcohol does lower the quality of sleep. Maybe going to the gym would be a healthier alternative. True, but that's a bit ambitious after a long day's work, and I'd miss socializing with the guys. Question: What is one thing the man implies? Number nine. Well, I've inspected your cafe's kitchen, as well as the counter and seating areas. I hope everything complied with the city's hygiene codes. According to my records, your cafe passed an inspection six months ago with flying colors. Not a single violation and only one warning. Unfortunately, that's not the case this time. I see. First, there was expired milk in your refrigerator. Yes, sorry, we were going to dispose of that. Also, you serve smoked fish, including salmon. And that needs to be chilled at below four degrees to prevent the growth of dangerous bacteria. Yes, I'm aware of that. Well, your counter fridge is set to five degrees. I'll have to issue a violation for that, and also for the expired dairy. If the fines aren't paid, you won't be eligible to renew your operating license when your current one expires. Understood. Was there anything else? I noticed deep cuts in your cutting boards. Bacteria can get trapped in these and contaminate foods. I won't cite you for it, but you should replace those soon to minimize the risk of causing foodborne illness. I will, of course. Thank you for coming out. Question: What is one thing the man says about the cafe? Number ten. As you know, the company's spring social event is just three weeks away, and we've been tasked with organizing it. What was last year's event? We went to an entertainment center. You know, a place with a bowling alley, table tennis, arcade games, those sorts of things. It was fun, but I have a hunch people want to be outdoors this year. How about a barbecue at Cove's Beach? There's no shortage of barbecue facilities and picnic tables. Half of my department is vegetarian or vegan. I'm not sure they'd enjoy an event that revolves around grilling meat. Dolphin Cruise Lines does dinner cruises around the bay, and they probably have a vegetarian menu. I hear the sunsets are spectacular. Actually, I recently tried to organize a family cruise with them, and I was told they were fully booked until summer. Wow, they must be fantastic! We should reserve spots now for our summer event, just in case. Good idea. You know, to go back to the barbecue idea, there are a surprisingly large number of alternatives for vegans: cauliflower steak, tofu burgers. It wouldn't necessarily be a problem. Well, considering we're kind of under the gun here, why don't we go with that? Question. What is the woman's opinion?
A. The Great Salt Lake. The Great Salt Lake, a large U.S. lake known for its high salt content, could disappear within five years, scientists warn. Normally, the lake undergoes some evaporation during summer, but it recovers after being fed by melting snow from nearby mountains. Dramatic population growth in the surrounding area, however, means more water is being diverted away from the rivers that carry the snow melt to the lake and directed instead toward businesses, residences, and farmland. Rising temperatures due to climate change exacerbate the problem, as the increased heat means more mountain snow turns directly into water vapor rather than melting. Scientists are worried about the lake's diminishing water level. For one, the salt content is becoming too concentrated for the lake to support local insects and prey animals. This then endangers the millions of birds that feed on them. Perhaps the greatest concern, however, is that the lake bed contains toxic metals left over from past mining activity. Without water covering the lake bed, dust containing these metals could become airborne and put local residents at risk of respiratory diseases and cancers. According to scientists, drastically reducing local water consumption is vital to avoiding a catastrophe. Questions Number 11. According to the speaker, what is one problem facing the Great Salt Lake? Number 12. What is one concern that scientists have with regard to the lake? B. Internally displaced persons. In recent years, the global refugee crisis has gained international attention as millions of people displaced by famine, conflict and government persecution have sought shelter in foreign countries. Less well known, however, are internally displaced persons or IDPs. These are also people who have been forced to flee their homes, but they are distinguished from refugees by the fact that they have not crossed an international border. People are often in this situation because their escape has been cut off in a war zone or they lack the financial means to transport themselves across an international boundary. Unfortunately, they are particularly vulnerable because treaties designed to ensure the well-being of refugees do not apply to those who are unable to escape their home nation. While some countries have enacted laws to ensure the rights of IDPs, these laws are often ineffective in cases where such people are persecuted by their own governments. When this happens, or during outbreaks of serious violence, it can be exceedingly difficult to provide them with urgently needed assistance. IDPs often flee to isolated areas or attempt to conceal themselves, making it nearly impossible for aid workers to locate them. According to experts, much greater international cooperation is needed to tackle the IDP issue. Questions Number 13. What is one reason that people become IDPs? Number 14. Why can it be difficult to help IDPs? C. Jean-Baptiste Say. The French economist Jean-Baptiste Say was born in 1767. As a young man, he was inspired by Adam Smith, who is sometimes referred to as the father of capitalism. Like Smith, Say believed in the benefits of free markets and was critical of financial interference by governments. He is best known for Say's Law of Markets, 
which suggests there will always be a demand for goods, so markets naturally self-regulate. Say became an advisor to the French government, and Say's law was widely accepted in the West. Free market economics remained popular into the early 1900s, but the Great Depression, which started in the United States in 1929, raised doubts regarding Say's law. The economist John Maynard Keynes argued that Say's law was unable to explain such a severe economic downturn and that the only way to ensure economic recovery was to use government spending to prop up industries and provide jobs. This approach was appealing during the Great Depression as U.S. citizens increasingly demanded that the government take decisive steps to alleviate the economic situation. As a result, measures were implemented based on Keynes's ideas, which then guided economic policies for decades to come. Questions Number 15. What does the speaker say about Jean-Baptiste Say? Number 16. Why did the United States adopt John Maynard Keynes's ideas? D. Canada's candy bar protests. Following the end of World War II, Canadian chocolate makers faced a dilemma. During the war, the government had offered subsidies to manufacturers of various products and had set wage and price freezes in order to control inflation. When these policies were scrapped, however, shortages of raw materials, especially cocoa, caused production costs to soar. Soon, the price of a chocolate bar was raised from 5 to 8 cents. Overnight, chocolate bars became unaffordable for many children. The boys and girls of Canada were so angry that protests sprang up nationwide. There were street demonstrations, petitions, and gatherings in front of government buildings. At first, there was widespread public approval of the protests. Newspapers wrote editorials condemning the chocolate company's actions, and some shop owners refused to sell chocolate bars. However, during this period, there were widespread fears of Soviet influence in the Western world. Rumors began to circulate that the protesters were being supported by communists who hoped to destroy North America's capitalist society and convert people to communism. Newspaper editorials turned against the children, and groups that had previously backed the children withdrew their support. Gradually, the movement faded away, and chocolate bar prices remained high. Questions Number 17 what was the reason for the chocolate bar price increase? Number 18. What is one thing we learn about the protests? E. Trouble on the Thames Throughout London's history, the River Thames has served as a commercial waterway that has allowed the city to flourish economically. Unfortunately, during the Industrial Revolution, the river also became a convenient place to dump industrial waste. Even worse, London's sewage system, which was built in the 1800s, was not designed to deal with the city's rapidly growing population. So, excess human waste frequently overflowed into the river. Concentrations of toxic pollutants in the water increased, and oxygen levels dropped, to the extent that the river could no longer sustain life. Local wildlife either escaped or perished, and in 1957, 
The Thames was declared biologically dead by London's Natural History Museum. Additionally, the river began to lose economic relevance for London in the 1960s, when larger ships requiring deeper water became the standard for international shipping. This led to the closure of many shipyards, and formerly prosperous riverside industrial neighborhoods were eventually abandoned, causing unemployment rates to rise. By the 1990s, however, efforts by government agencies and private organizations to address these problems began to pay off. Cleanup projects have once again made the river habitable for fish and aquatic mammals, and redevelopment of riverside areas is bringing people back to the river. Questions Number 19. What is one thing the speaker says? Number 20. What caused economic problems for the riverside industrial areas? F. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 21. My organization evaluates charities based on various criteria to help donors find a charity that matches their goals. One organization we found recently is Children's Needs. Its work, sending tutors to schools in low-income neighborhoods, is very admirable. They do good work, although we found that their office costs, that is, the amount they spend on administration and salaries, are very high. Homes to Live is another worthy organization. They help the homeless here in our city. No charity we found compares to them in terms of the high percentage of donations going straight to the people they're helping. Another option is the Northside Hospital, which needs funds to expand its children's ward. Their administrative costs are substantial, but donating to them can be considered a long-term investment in the community. Finally, End Disease helps to fight illnesses in Africa. They have high fundraising expenditures, but their work in saving lives is excellent overall. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. G. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 22. This is the WICU morning traffic report. Things are moving smoothly overall in the east part of the city, but there have been some major tie-ups in the west. If you're on Bloor Street and planning to get on Highway 401, be advised that the area is experiencing heavy traffic, so you may be better off taking Davis Avenue instead. In addition, there's been a major collision on the Mackenzie Freeway near the Bloor Street exit that's obstructing traffic in both directions. Many drivers are pulling off the freeway and onto Westminster Boulevard, so traffic has slowed to a crawl there as well. If you're headed downtown, getting onto Lakeshore Drive is probably your best bet. From there, you can get onto Mackenzie past the area affected by the accident. That's all for now. We'll be back in 20 minutes with another update. Now, mark your answer on your answer sheet. H. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 23.
We carry a few models for kids under 12. Over here is the Tot tablet. It's a big seller among parents of 5 to 7 year olds, and it's being used more and more in kindergarten classrooms. It comes with a range of apps and games, but it can't connect to the internet. So there are limits to how useful your son would find it when he gets a little older. The Tot Tablet Pro, however, has full internet connectivity. Be aware that kids under 10 can have trouble operating it because it's a bit complicated. The Tablet Wizard is a hit with kids over 8, but even my 5-year-old loves to play games and watch educational content on it. It allows internet access, and the parental controls are thorough. We also carry the Pro version, which has more built-in storage. It's considerably heavier, though, and can be hard to carry around, so it's not recommended for elementary age children. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. I. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 24. From what you've told me, I'm sure we can help you with a loan. Of course, the final decision will be based on the detailed business plan you submit with your application. Now then. The interest rate for our standard startup loan is 6%. If you have previous experience running a restaurant, you can apply for our prime startup loan, which has a lower interest rate of 4%. You might also be interested in our business startup seminars. We offer six seminars, which each focus on a different aspect of running a business. If you complete all six, You'll be eligible for a 1% reduction on the interest rate, regardless of which loan you apply for. The seminars start in April and are held at the community college. I'll send you more information by email and you can register online until March 12th. Spaces are limited though, so I'd advise signing up quickly. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. J. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 25. Allura Insurance is a popular choice for drivers who want to cut their expenses. Their Your Pace plan allows you to pay based on the distance you drive rather than a fixed rate. It's more economical if your yearly mileage is below 9,000 kilometers. Otherwise, their Allura Gold plan is the next most budget-friendly option. Keep in mind, though, that quite a few customers have reported that Allura can be slow to settle claims, and there have been some lawsuits recently. Stevenson Direct Insurance is a touch pricier, but we get more positive feedback about them. They have an option like the Your Pace plan called Stevenson As You Go that also saves money up to 9,000 kilometers, so it's financially advantageous for people with short commutes or retirees. Otherwise, Stevenson Standard is well below the rates of most other major firms, although a bit higher than Allura's. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. This is an interview with Charlotte Moore, who is an airport operations specialist. Welcome, Charlotte. Thanks for coming in to speak to us. I'm glad to be here. First, could you describe what you do? Sure. I work at a relatively small airport in my state, and I'm part of the airport operations team there. Our job is to keep the airport safe and in good working order. 
What are the backgrounds of the people on your team? We're a pretty diverse group. We have a couple of people who started off in airport maintenance crews, one who used to be in the armed forces, and one who was a commercial pilot. Personally, I started in an airport ground crew, then worked for an airline before getting into airport operations. The team has broad experience, which I think is important because the job has a lot of different aspects. I can imagine. And I assume you have to follow strict procedures when doing your job. Absolutely. Firstly, we have to adhere to FAA standards. The FAA is the Federal Aviation Administration, and it issues guidelines known as Part 139 standards. Based on those, our team does a minimum of two full inspections every 24 hours. Once in the daytime and once at night. That covers the airport legally, but we also do additional inspections to further improve public safety. The majority of these are carried out at night when there's less air traffic. Can you tell us about what these inspections entail? So we inspect all the taxiways and runways and the passenger areas inside the terminal. If we find anything out of place, we'll put in a work order for the maintenance crews. That could be a priority order for something like a hole in the runway, or it may be a lower priority for issues that can be dealt with later. For example, a piece of ripped carpet in the departure lounge, something that's not an immediate threat but could endanger public safety if neglected. And we have to be vigilant at all times. So even if we're not officially on an inspection, we'll be looking out for problems, making sure everything's working as it's supposed to. It sounds like you really need to stay alert. That's exactly right. And it's also our responsibility to come up with creative solutions. A common problem we have is wildlife incursions onto the runway. I think most passengers equate airline safety with things like air turbulence or engine failure, but actually, the number of aircraft accidents involving animal strikes has more than doubled in the last couple of decades. Most of these are caused by birds. But mammals like deer and coyotes also find their way onto runways. How do you deal with that kind of problem? We obviously have fences, but they aren't always effective. For us, coyotes are a problem because they dig under the perimeter fence. Some airports use barbed wire or electric fences, but those can be inhumane, so we've been experimenting with alternative solutions. There's new technology available that can deter animals without harming them. But I think probably the most effective solution is taking measures to make the habitat around the runway less inviting. That involves things like removing ground cover animals can use for shelter and eliminating plants that are potential food sources. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us today. It was my pleasure. Questions Number 26 What is one thing Charlotte says about airport inspections? Number 27. What does Charlotte say about wildlife on runways? <laughs>